Hey y'all, welcome back to Knitting in Our Jeans. There we go. There we um, go. I'm Liz. And uh, I'm Carolyn. And on Instagram, Instagram and Ravelry, I'm to Liz for you, T O O L I Z Z F O R Y O U. And I'm C P R E D M O R on Instagram and Ravelry. And a lot of times I'm on Instagram, it's Knitting in Our Jeans dash C. And I've been showing people the progress of my socks all week. Yes. Yes. It's been yeah. very exciting. Well, I was very excited about it. I have to remember, my first pair of socks took me a month to do. Uh, so to be able to do a pair of socks in about a week. It's amazing. That is just I'm, amazing. So I mean, I'm, I'm on week, what? I'm on to week, th into week three, I think, of mine. Yeah, well, you're doing so many things. Yeah, true. true. So... Anyway, welcome back, all those of you who've seen us before. Thank you very much for coming back. For anybody who's new, thank you. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Um, it's just us, so <laughs> you're welcome. Come along. We're going to be talking about knitting and, and dyeing of some yarn. Mm -hmm. and, and the week I had on Wednesday, it was a whole week in one day. It really was. Um, but what did you finish? I finished my socks. Speaking of the socks, so yeah, one is backwards. This is what they're having me do a riverbed gusset. So it's on the bottom of the heel rather than on Which the sides. Which is very sides. similar to the ones that they had you do for the first one. Yes, yes. Um, so, and yes, the leg is shorter than the foot by about an inch. Normally when I make my socks, I try to have the leg, when you fold it at the heel, to be about the same length. Mm -hmm. Actually, these are the same length. Well, no. Anyway, nah. I would have made the, the leg, leg longer, longer, but uh, it's in the tour de sock, and you only needed six pattern repeats for the tour de sock. So they're getting... Now, obviously, this only needed seven, but to fit my foot, because of all the cables involved... It, it foreshortened the sock, so I ended up, instead of doing seven repeats, I did nine repeats on um, once it got to here, and they fit really well, really, really very well. I'm very, very pleased with them, and I don't have socks this color, so yeah. I'm very excited about wearing these socks, so yeah. very nice, very, very nice. I may take them on the boat trip with us. Probably a good idea. Probably a very good idea, because we're going up to Cape Cod, and there can be cold weather, there can be warm weather, there can be all kinds of weather. So that will go in my pile of stuff that I'm packing. Good. Did you finish anything this week? No, but I am diligently working away on my socks. So as you can see, we got up to here. The, uh, I know I finished my first, oh, it's downstairs, uh, but I finished my first sock earlier this week, right? That Good. was earlier this yes. week? I think so. I think so. Or was I working on this at the wedding? I wasn't working on the second sock at the wedding. No, you I was still busy. working on the first sock at the wedding. So this is I a lot finished my first sock and I cast on the second and I am through the heel. What is that stitch marker? Which one? That this one? one? It is a pinup girl. Ah! It's a pinup girl. Very nice. Yeah, it's not one of the really well defined ones, but it's still pretty. Um, I'm through the gusset, the double gusset on the bottom. The riverbed gussets. Yeah, and so now I just go for. So this marker indicates my. Um, like the, 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 start the, the, the start of the, of the foot. foot. Um, and I go for eight patterns on the foot and then I do the toe. Okay. So I am doing the mirrored um, for the second sock. Um, you really can't tell, but um, I'm doing the mirrored um, pattern. Ah, so you reversed it. So I reversed it. Um, so it leans this way, way versus this way. Um, just so that it's a pair of socks. I thought mm. that was important. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I've pretty much only been working on this, um, just because I want to get them done. Mm hmm And, uh, I would like to get them done before the third pattern comes out mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Yes, it does. So, that's my goal. Unfortunately, 
we had a little a little hiccup happen this week of my coworkers have decided to host a baby oh, yeah, shower that. for another one of my coworkers. Um, she doesn't really have a team or really a department. Um, she's slightly interdepartmental, kind of. Yeah, it's weird. So the marketing department decided they were going to host one, you know, company-wide. And so <sighs> I'm knitting a hat. I also found some really cute booties. So if I can knit this other ear flap and 12 inch eye cord 12 inch five stitch eye cord um and then i Start can on booties and then i can hopefully get the booties done i would really like to give her the hat and booties because i think that'd be really cute um she's adorable. having a little girl yes i know i'm knitting it in blue but, but we like blue. i think it's really pretty um my only colors i had were this the gray i had the like sheepy brownie gray um, I had this black. blue, I had black, and I had a green of this similar kind of shade, um, in the green family versus in the blue family. Um, and I think the blue just looks bad, looked best with the gray, and it just works out I best. it was really pretty. And honestly, she doesn't seem like she's an overly traditional color person, and if anyone pitches a fit, I'm gonna say, yeah, but did you knit your gift? Someone's going to pitch a fit. No yeah. one's going to pitch so, a fit. Because I don't know her, so I really didn't feel comfortable um, going out and buying yarn specifically for this. Um, though one of my former coworkers, her other, Carmen's other daughter now is pregnant, so with a little girl, so I might knit... Another one? Another one, or I might knit a sweater for her, because I nice. knit her sister a sweater Very for nice. her baby. Very but nice. I might knit it, like, because I know earlier now. Yes. So I might yes. start yes. and knit maybe a little bit bigger of a size. But, yeah, that's what I've been working on. I still have my Hitchhiker in my bag to work on. I still have my Zweig in my bag to work on. I still have a few other things in my bag to work on. I have a swap knit that I just got the yarn for that I have oh to start. Oh, my goodness. That needs to be sent out in a month. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be, I, I figured out something else I have. I have that dress that I'm proposing as a new. Oh, yeah. And it's downstairs. Some of the other yarn, I mean, some of the other yarn, I think it's, uh, no, I think all the yarn. This overball one? Yeah. Yeah. It's downstairs. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Sorry, guys. I left it downstairs. But let me show you what I've been working on. Very diligently. Yes. I am trying not to lose all the stitches. Hold on just a minute. And yes, I'm working on two ends of the sugar maple. All right, so this is roughly how long it was when we before we started ripping it out because I have just attached the third ball of yarn. And you can see this is yarn that I dyed in a workshop at Neighborhood Fiber. And I dyed three different skeins. This was the lighter skein. It was more yellow. This was the medium skein, which had kind of an equal shading of blues and yellows. And then... This is the darker, which is mostly blues. Which is the darker, mostly blues. And that's going to be the bottom. So I have gone from here to here. And I have added, I have finished one sleeve. And I have almost finished my second sleeve. It's completely in rib. Yes. Completely in rib. Because... The, this was a rib edge. Oh, uh, yeah. And so I thought to make it fit, yeah, in terms of fit within the pattern, I would do an entirely ribbed sleeve. And they're short sleeves. Yeah, no, it's but cute. But I think they'll be really cute. And as you can tell, I'm adding the sleeve on from the top. I'm So I'm doing the knitted in sleeve for the sleeve cap. And I've got... I've got maybe four more rows to go to uh, finish attaching this sleeve to the body and then three, so maybe seven more rows to go to finish that sleeve and then I can start back at knitting the bottom. And I'm very happy with what we've done to the back. Um, obviously I have been making changes in this pattern so instead of being 
you know, just straight across the back. I now have a dip in the back, somewhat like the dip in the front, and I'm much happier with it. I tried it on the other day, and I'm very much happier with this. And it fits like a glove. I'm so excited about it. So this is the extra piece that I'm knitting in the back. It's going to make it a little bit more A-line, which is fine. And I'm very happy. So I'm hoping actually to finish that by Wednesday. And that's my plan. On Wednesday, the new sock pattern comes out. My team is trying to convince me that I should be doing this sock. I have to find my beads. I have a beater. I have a flegal beater. And it's in this little clutch purse that's made out of um, gum wrappers that I bought and you know I have to find where I put it and as I look around the room I don't... It's in a safe space. It's in a very safe space. Uh, things around here get lost in safe spaces but it is in a very safe space because I wouldn't I wouldn't have done anything else with it. No. So it's in it's in one of these bigger bags when I try to get organized I organize things in these bigger canvas bags and I'm one of those people that don't remember where anything is unless I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to be looking for those beads to take with me. And uh, I'm going to try the beading. Instead of using the flegal beater, I think I'm going to try doing it on... Um, with the super flosser? The super floss dental floss with the dental floss threader. Um, one of my team members said that she's done it on a boat. Uh, done beating on a boat that way and it works out very well and there's no no beads running all over the place I went okay so I looked at a YouTube video and it looked relatively simple okay. so it's worth a try I just had to find all my beads because I've got a ton of beads that are perfect for knitting and I have to find it so that's what I'm going to be doing what else do you have planned anything planned not nothing really nothing, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to finish things I okay. mean I'm trying to stash down and I'm trying to finish things okay I did why not... I'm using stash for this baby blanket and hat or baby right, hat so for the Jenny uh, sweater I did not swatch make a swatch for it I did find a smaller needle and the needle I had in it was a two I thought it was a one. It wasn't. I sized it. Um, it was a two. So now I've gone down. I have a zero out since I was so far off in the gauge. I mean, they needed, what, 46, and I had 32. Mm -hmm. So um, I will continue taking this apart. I'm not taking this on the boat with me. This is just far too fine. It's like knitting with thread um, to work well, and I'm not getting myself into that. So, I but I do have an appropriate size needle. Um, I want to finish the sugar maple. And then, uh, what we're leaving on Friday. And we're trying to decide if we're going to be able to get together on Thursday and post a YouTube for you all. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. We've got the packing done. Uh, and everything kind of settles because my father-in-law is going into a new facility on Wednesday. And things may not be settled. So, we'll just have to see. But I also want to take with me, oh, this is Everything. The, the yarn for the socks. And they said it needs to be a tonal. So I'm yeah. choosing between one of those two. And actually, I may wait till I get in the boat to, to wind it. Because I hate not knowing what it is that I've done. Um, because... I think the, the first set of socks that I knitted up was in a support sponsored yarn. And since I didn't know what it was, I couldn't claim it as a sponsored yarn. That's my thought. We'll see. There's several days between now and Friday. So, and, and the pattern comes out on Wednesday. So I can wind it then. You can. <sighs> Losing my mind. Anyway, so the socks are coming with me. Um, this sweater. That's where that yarn went. Oh, that's good. This is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm working on a sock pattern uh, to give away. Uh, with the Rhinebeck class. With the Rhinebeck class and the sock class at Knit. 
And so that's what this is. And I, I will take that with me. And then this is all the further. I've gotten a belt. I've knitted a belt on the linen sweater that I got from the Knitted, knitted Pearl. Pearl at the Long Island Yarn Crawl. Um, I have the pattern. Not, not done very well here. Let's see if we can get a better picture of it. No. It's called the Colino. And in person, it was stunning. When I look at it here in the book, I'm not all that bold, bold over. It's number 15. Number 15. Thank you. I mean, it's still quite pretty. But it was really stunning. Um, I think she said she had knitted it down a size in order to get the fabric that she wanted. I've got all the yarn, so this is coming with me. And then I have an Ephelba, partially done. Whoa. Yes, I'm throwing yarn at you all. <laughs> it is a top-down sweater. And these are supposed to be three-quarter length sleeves. If I have enough yarn, I may make them the longer sleeves. Um, again, it fits, it, and it's been sitting around for at least two and a half, three years. So I'm going to take that with me. Uh, and I think that will be good. And no, my beads are not in here. And you gave me this bag. Yeah, I did give you that bag. It's a lovely bag. It has bag. a zipper. Zipper, it's to stow under the seat of yes. the airplane. So, you know what I can do is I yes, can put this. Yes, that's Bud and Chloe. That's Bud and Chloe. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you cast it on in uh, 2013. So it's almost five years old. If you get it done before Thanksgiving, it, it'll turn five at Thanksgiving. Okay, so then this is going on the trip with us. And, oh, so we ought to tell them what we did today. Oh, what did we do today? We did some yarn dyeing. And we I'm did. looking down at my feet because that's where I have the pot. Because this stuff is still wet. A bit wet. So this is Fell Out of Love. And it's got some speckles in it. And it's certainly got some color gradient going on. And it's I Fell Out of Love. And I really like it. <laughs> and then we've got this, which is also a speckled gradient. And this is called Inside My Mind. It's very pretty. I love it. And I think this is a worsted. Didn't we do the worsted or did we do the DK? I think this is the worsted. Yeah. So these will be drawing. Yep. Fell Out of Love mm -hmm. is fingering, and this is, inside my mind, DK is the DK. You picked up DK. DK. So. Yeah. And I love it. In fact, I want to do that on fingering. Okay. That will be really pretty. And I will be using Fell Out of Love to make up some of the practice socks for the um, sock uh, class class at knit at knit and I will be doing more for Rhinebeck so everybody will start off with a practice sock at because that way you can start practicing on the afterthought heel so we were doing that but let me tell you about Wednesday Wednesday I wasn't driving my car, I was driving my husband's car because he needed to do something with his father and his father can't get in and out of my husband's car anymore. So he took my car, which is, I guess a sport utility vehicle. Yes. So it's a bit, it, it opens doors open wider, you don't sink down into the car. My husband has an Audi, an A6, so a sedan. So you, when you step into it, you sit down into the car. And so I had a doctor's appointment. I was supposed to have an MRI on my knee, which was very important. And I was going to run over to knit. I was going to talk to Cheryl. This needs to go over in this bag. Um, I was going to talk to Cheryl about something. 
So I started off about 10.30, and I was driving. I got on the highway, got off the highway, was on a local road, and all of a sudden the car, there's a different smell in the car. The air conditioner does not seem to be working, and a temperature light went on. And the car says to me, pull over, stop the car, check your coolant. And first I'm looking around to see who's talking to me. And then I realize it's the car. And then I'm on a road that doesn't have a distressed shoulder. So there is no place to pull over. So I'm thinking, now what do I do? So obviously I can't, I'm not going to stop right in traffic. So I do remember that there's a gas station probably a mile up the street. So I said, fine, I'll just slow down some, turn off the air conditioner, and I'll make it to the gas station, which has a service area. So I pulled in there, very flustered. I'm telling you, I was extremely flustered. And went in and said, the car, the light, the car came on with the light. Or basically I inter I switched car and light in the sentence. And they looked at me and pointed, go over there. So I went over there. Got my story straight that I was driving along the temperature gauge light came on the car told me to pull over shut down and there's something wrong with my coolant and can he help me he said well we have to wait a little bit for the car to cool down I said yes and then I want to know where to put the car because I'd managed to block four people in and he said well all right go out and pull it so it's perpendicular to no so it's it's this is going it's along the side of the building right I said, okay. So I went out and I did that. Mm -hmm. And then I waited for about a half an hour for the car to cool down. Mm -hmm. He goes out. He puts a half a gallon of antifreeze in the car. A half a gallon. You know, I get my car serviced every 5,000 miles, whether it needs it or not. Mm -hmm. So that I don't have these kinds of problems. And in fact, that morning I'd been thinking about going off to school, which is in the Bronx. And I'm this would have fallen didn't. apart on the highway or on a bridge or something like that. It would have been a real mess. Yeah. I have to go in this Wednesday. I'm going to take it. I can't take my car. I have to take his car. But you know what? My car's air conditioning is broken again, so they'll be in a hot car. I'll have the car that's been fixed. My car's been in twice for the air conditioning. We're not going to go into that. Obviously, a 12-year-old car is harder to fix than we thought. Be that as it may. So he came in after putting a half a gallon of coolant in the car and said, you okay? I have a bruise on my hand. I don't know from what. I don't know how I got it. Whatever, we're delicate. We're very delicate. Lives. He comes back in and he says, listen, I didn't see anything pooling on the ground. Um, it seems to be running fine now. Of course, it's cool. The whole car is cooled for a half an hour. He says, I think he'll be fine. I said, great. So I need to go between Roslyn and Great Neck, 20 miles? No, maybe, 10. Maybe. maybe 10. 10 to get to the MRI. And I decide not to go on the highway. I decide to go on the access road, so that way I can go slower than on the highway. And I go one town over. Actually, I go from one end of Roslyn to the other end of Roslyn. And the light came on again. The this line. is when you called Steve. No, well, yes. I pulled in. There's a whole series of, of office buildings that go back about four, and then you get to the Roslyn train station. So I was actually thinking about finding a parking space in the Rock Roslyn train station. There were none to be had. So then I parked in one of the office building parking lots and called our mechanic and said, Steve, the light is on. It's telling me to pull over and shut the car down and check my coolant. I have an MRI that I need to get to within the half an hour. What it, what should I do? He goes, is there steam coming out of the car? I said, no, there is no steam coming out of the car. Is the car getting hot? I said, I assume so. That's why the light is on. He goes, what? check the temperature gauge. Well, at this point, I'm so flustered, I can't find the temperature gauge. And I tell him that. So he says, well, I think you would be okay, but just in case, if you can find a place to park the car, park the car. I said, okay, I'll Uber it over to Northwell Health. He goes, good idea. So luckily I have Uber on my phone. And 
I didn't use Lyft because there's not as many Lyft drivers as there are Uber drivers and I wanted to get there in time for this MRI um, because the, the damage is to the soft tissue, not the bone, and we need to see. I, the Uber guy got there in six minutes, took me over there. I was in the MRI machine, which was hysterical because it wasn't over all of me. It was just around my leg. So I was in a very ladylike position, lean all the way back with my foot into this machine so I could see it. And luckily, they had a blanket. I had a dress on. <laughs> so we had a blanket, and I listened to soft rock while I did this. But, of course, with my... You didn't fall asleep this time? No. No, uh, apparently when I'm in them, I fall asleep. Yeah. Oh, and she wakes herself up. Snoring. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't fall asleep. If any yet. of you have had an MRI, you understand how intense that is. Well, it's very loud. It's a very loud machine. <laughs> I fall asleep. And she wakes herself up with the snoring. <laughs> I mean, I have I have fallen asleep in my, my fair share of MRIs. I have not woken myself up due to my snoring. <laughs> but, but I do. Anyway, um, so we did the MRI. Uh, they were finally able to get it in the right position. But being held in the same position for an hour, it was talking to me the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... And saying not nice things, I'm assuming? Saying not nice things. Then my... And, and Oh, when I got to the building, I called my husband to tell him what his car was doing. And he says, well, I'm very busy. I have to get to a doctor's appointment and I have to do all these things. You're going to have to handle it. I said, okay, I'll handle it. So I come down out of the MRI and I have a phone call on my phone saying, call me. So I called him and he goes, I'm over at my doctor's appointment. I'll be done really shortly. What do you want to do? I said, well, I can Uber over to you. So I'm getting really good at this Uber stuff. <laughs> he goes, okay. So he has my car. So I Ubered over there. He's already done by this point. We get in my car. We drive back to his car. At which it, point you tell him, you're getting in your own car. Well, yes, because good. if there's a problem, he needs to see it. And, of yes. course, it's been sitting now for an hour and a half. So it thinks it's fine. So he gets in it, and we drive the local streets down to the mechanic, and it hasn't acted up yet. So when we go into the office, he leaves it on, and we're talking to um, the wife of our mechanic who's there, and she says, well, I'm not a mechanic. Well, wait a minute. You know, he'll be back in just a minute. So I'm preparing to leave Richard there when the mechanic comes in, Lou comes in, and they go back out to look at the car, and the gauge is on now. And the temperature gauge is rising. So it's not just a sensor. There's something wrong. So now Rich says, okay, can you take me back home? I say, I'll miss physical therapy. So we, he calls the physical therapist to say, I've had a car problem. He has had a car problem. I'm taking him home. I'll be there late, but I'll be there. They say, great. Physical therapy was such a relief to get to <laughs> after the earlier part of my day. I was still shaking. Anyway, so we started doing physical therapy on my knee. I have to say, the wedding that we went to last weekend was lovely. I found out I can't dance just on one leg. No. Not a good idea. No. I think we mentioned that last yes. Sunday. Yes. It's still not a good idea. No. It's really depressing. Yeah. But hopefully, it's I have okay. a doctor's appointment. We don't appointment. have another wedding. I know. I have a so. doctor's appointment on Tuesday. Uh -huh. So hopefully I'll find out exactly what I've done to my knee and we can press forward in deciding what we were going to do to rehab yes. this knee. Yes. It's definitely a lot better, um, but then I haven't been doing much with the knee. And we're going sailing, so this ought to be interesting. So we need to find out exactly what I've done so that hopefully on the trip I can do things to not make the knee worse by any means. Maybe I can even do things to make it better, but certainly not to make it worse. So, and we have to figure out when we're going to be podcasting. If we're lucky, we'll do it Thursday night if uh -huh. there's not a lot of extra packing going on. Right. The problem is that high tide is at 3 a.m. and or 4 a.m. on Friday and 5 p.m., which is not optimal for leaving on Friday. So I think we've decided that we're going to load everything into the launch and then load from the launch onto the boat. We'll pack that launch, but that's fine. And uh, we'll get things put away, and I think we've got enough water on the boat to make it for two days till we get to Stonington. And there we can pull up and get fresh water. No problem. We filled up with water the last time we were in Stonington, so that should be fine. 
We went grocery shopping today. We did. We that was an adventure. Lo- loading up on everything that we needed. That was an adventure. The cart was squealing at us. And well, finally, at the point where we stopped, Mother goes, I think we've hit critical mass of the cart. <laughs> it's starting to get too heavy for me to push. And I was like, well, then, yes. I thought the wheels were digging into the floor. So it was taking like a running start for her to like move it. And I was like, so. okay. We we are we're starting to get well stocked up. The rest yeah. of the stuff we really shouldn't get until Thursday or Friday morning. Yeah. Thursday night or Friday morning, so they'd be fresh. Yeah. Fresh hamburger meat, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, that kind of stuff. So I think it'll be great. I think we're doing fine. And then I made the mistake of having some of the canned goods sent to Manhattan College. I clicked the wrong button. So on Wednesday when I go into work, I'll bring all that stuff home. We will have all that stuff. So we'll be in good shape. It'll be great. It will be great. And by that time, I will have finished my sugar maple. And I'll have that to wear on the trip. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And then you found that I finished that every day. She's so... Oh, my God. (laughs) She pulls out the alphaba. Alphaba. I want to call it alphaba. Um, That's fine. The... The Ephelba, and she's like, oh, the My Dragonfly Fibers. And I was like, no, Mom, you finished that. And she goes, no, I didn't. And I was like, Mom, <laughs> you finished the Iridici. She goes, no, I didn't. And, Mom, you finished it. <laughs> you were very excited about this. I know you finished it. Why is it in my drawers? I don't freaking know. <laughs> so I go on her Ravelry. My iPad is off screen here. I go on Ravelry and I find it. And it has a finished photo. And she goes, oh, I did finish it. I should find that. I should. Well, I haven't been into work for a month. And I normally wear these things I when I go into work. So I haven't been into work because of my knee. So I forgot that I finished it. But obviously, yeah. I'll be getting all that stuff ready for the fall. I have yeah. to start working on what I'm going to be doing in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. I meant to talk about this a while back when I met all of these lovely women. Uh, but life has been crazy. Mm-hmm. And I have forgotten things. Um, so, first, I wanted to tell you all about Carpe Yarn. Um, it's like Carpe Diem, but Carpe Yarn. Um, she is featuring uh, women in with handcrafts. Um, and who do good for their community, whether it be, you know, someone's grandmother who teaches, you know, the local kids how to knit at the library, or if it's a yarn dyer who does, uh, philanthropy work, you know, either in their neighborhood or for the work, uh, for the country or the world at large. Um, so I got to meet up with her in June and it was lovely. So go follow her on Instagram. I think she's on Twitter as well, but I follow her on Instagram. She's from the Pacific North, or she's from the West Coast. I don't know exactly where, where in the West Coast. She was at Bryant Park with Cece and ah. a few of the other girls um, at one so of the knitting Bryant, Bryant Park. Park is yeah. that every day or every It's every week? Tuesday. So Knitting in Bryant Park is with um, Nitty City. Nitty City. And they Thank have you, Pearl. You, yes, they have you knitting um, shawl, uh, scarves for ho- the homeless, and so they have donated um, Lion Brand yarn, and you can knit that. Um, I have to whip out a bunch of scarves on the knitting machine before Labor Day to bring in um, okay. to her. Uh, but a lot of us just bring our regular projects and sit and knit. <laughs> But we have a knitting um, machine. So. But we do have a knitting machine, so I could probably whip those out. Um, what ha- what size yarn is it? It's like worsted weight. Like I have, it's we might the be stuff able to do I that have. on the circular stuff on that circular oh, thing. We could figure that out. Yeah, because just go part of the way and then part. Yeah, of the way I mean, I was gonna just use that. Um, <laughs> not lion brand, but that other yarn that we got at that yard sale a few years ago. Yeah, because I thought that'd be just good hardy yarn i don't know so i don't know if it'll work in the knitting machine yeah i'm gonna i'll try it okay um so then later that week so i met her probably a week or two before fourth of july uh and then the friday before fourth of july when my office was having their horrid tech problems i met um tau 
from Nerdy Bird Designs, who does these beautiful pins. Oh, that's pretty. And so, <laughs> bless you. Thank you. Um, so I actually, I'm not a pin person, as I've said before, but it's wow. okay. Girl, you might you might have you might have gotten me because I might need two of the others as well. Um, but she had this one left um, by the time I got there, and it's new. It's a new pin. Uh, at the time, it wasn't available anywhere else. Um, and she's working with Canon hand dyes to do uh, yarn sets in those nice. colors because they come. The pin comes in this color and uh, one or two others, I think. Um, but I was like, dark hair, purple yarn, uh, purple accessories. Perfect. Yes. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. And I wanted to tell you all about her because she's wonderful. She's going to be at Indian Tangled, I think. Oh, that's um, fun. And we're going to be at Indian We are Tangled. going to be at Indian we're Tangled. We're going to be volunteering. Yes. So. I think the early part of the afternoon. Yes. We're going to get one to three. Yes. So. So be there. Yeah. And we'll be there helping you. Yep, I think we're doing, like, check-in or something like that. I think you're right. I, so that's where we give them the bags? I don't know. We'll find out. We will be told. We will be told. Yes. It's um, a new facility. Can't yes. Wait. It's in Socrates. It's going to be great. Yes. Um. So I figure uh, either, well, it depends. Either I go up with someone who needs help, who might need help on Thursday, and you meet me up there, or... We or figured it out. Drive I mean, up on Friday. Yeah, or we drive up Friday after your class. Either way. So I think my class still has some openings at Rhinebeck. I haven't checked, so probably. But if you're interested in toe up socks, sign up. And if you're not going to Rhinebeck, but you're around Long Island, then Knit is having the same class or a very similar class on September 30th, which is a Sunday. Yes. And you could sign up with Knit. And we'll be there, both of us. Yes. So, frickin' fact, the knitting in our jeans will be actively teaching uh, sock knitting. And I've shown you the beginning of the sock this earlier. So, I will have my sock pattern all made up. Um, excited about that. I need to take some graph paper with me. That's what I need, graph paper. And, because uh, I want to figure out the, the top Baby part. Baby cable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. Maybe I'll do that this week, too. Okay. I just need to, to find my graph paper and write it okay. out, and then I'll... Do it in the song. Yeah. And then you and I just, when, when we're offline, we need to uh, talk about uh, possible fault stuff. Which you all will find out about later. Is that Canada? Yeah. I That's have to not. wait till Tuesday. You gotta wait? Okay. I have to wait till Tuesday when I find out about my knee. Okay. Well, I was gonna Sorry. say, we, well, we should still look at your schedule and see what it looks like for the two weekends we're thinking about. Okay. We so can do two that. weeks. Oh. But we wanted to go up earlier in the week, but you've got class. I have class. So you could always meet us up, meet up there later. We have to wait for my knee. I know. Okay. So I think that's about it. I think that is. We will be, I will be weaving it in very shortly. I will this. too. Look at how, look how close we are. You're very We're close. So close. Very, I'm like very close. within like three inches. Very so, nice. We'll probably be downstairs watching the re uh, rerun yeah. of the, the showing of the Tour de France, which we watched today. It started half an hour ago, so we're gonna go down and watch the finish of that again. It's I love the Tour de France, and I have gotten a lot of knitting done while it's been on, so that part's been really good. Yeah. And it's easier to be disabled and knitting while watching the Tour de France or, yes. or something like that. It's like kind of like watching the Olympics. So anyway, we're really glad you came to yes. be with us. Thank you very much. And with luck, we'll see you um, late later this, this week. Later this week. And then it will be off for about two weeks. All we're right. We're going to be in Maine. Maine? We're going to figure Cape this out. Cod, something like that. Anyway, bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Talk to you later.